Okay, um, brothers and sisters, this is Eric. Thank you for joining me. Today, I want to talk about Biden's upcoming visit to Israel, particularly East Jerusalem, on the 14th of July, which will be in three days' time. And why this is uh, super prophetically relevant. Now, there are some generic prophecies, while there are some very specific prophecies. And this is a very specific prophecy about what must happen before the rapture. So, if we go to Revelation 11, verses 2 and 3, okay, verse 3 tells us the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble after we are gone. So, verse 3 says, And I shall give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. Now, it does not matter if you believe that it is going to be a three and a half year tribulation or seven year tribulation. But we can, at least we can all agree that the two witnesses will start their 1,260 days ministry when? At the beginning of Jacob's trouble. So to find out what happens before they start their 1,260 day ministry, we simply go to the verse before it. So verse 2 tells us that they shall tread under foot the holy city for 42 months. Okay, and that is the point when the two witnesses start their ministry. And I believe that this is what Biden is there for. Now a lot of people don't understand the difference between the judgment for dividing the land of God versus the judgment for dividing Jerusalem. Now for dividing the land of God, that has already happened a long time ago. Because in 1948, what Israel received was a partial restoration that was not according to the parameters of uh, modern-day Israel, uh, modern-day Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt. Because the original biblical land, the promised land, you know, actually covers uh, parts of modern-day Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Syria, so on and so forth. So they have not received a full restoration yet. While the judgment for dividing the land of God is happen is going to happen near to the second coming, how do we know that? Because Prophet Zechariah said, And I shall draw them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and it is there I will enter into judgment with them, for they have divided my land, for they have parted my land. Now, obviously God will only draw them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat um, near to the second coming. But the judgment for dividing Jerusalem takes place immediately and it's going to lead to the start of Jacob's trouble. Right? It says that, right? I want, to, I want you to see the continuity from verse 2 to verse 3 of chapter, uh, of Revelation chapter 11, okay? From the continuity from verse 2 to verse 3. Verse 3 tells you when the two witnesses will start their 1,260 days ministry. While the verse before that in verse 2, it tells you what must happen. It is when the holy city shall they tread underfoot for 42 months. You see that? Which means the fall of Jerusalem. And when Biden goes there, especially to East Jerusalem, he's going to show the world that he supports a two-state solution and that he supports that, you know, East Jerusalem, uh, that the Palestinians can lay claim to East Jerusalem. The world has always seen Israel as being the obstacle to peace, because as long as Jerusalem belongs to Israel, there can never be peace. As a matter of fact, the whole conflict in the Middle East and beyond is all because of Jerusalem being in the hands of Israel. Okay? And this is the reason why with Jerusalem no longer belonging to Israel, that's when they shall say peace and safety. And we know what happens, right? And then sudden destruction shall come upon them and like a woman in travail, they shall not escape. Then people may ask, you know, Wow, but Eric, you know, if you go to Revelation 11, it says that for but the court that is without the temple, live out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. So what about the third temple? Because in Revelation 11 verse 1, if we go back one verse before that, the chapter starts off by saying that, you know, the angel was uh, given a rod. Uh, no, sorry. John was saying that he saw that he was given a rod. Read like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Question. 
if the word temple of God is there in Revelation 11 verse 1, as well as in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where it says that and the, man, and the son of perdition shall sit in a temple of God showing that he is God. So there is a temple of God reference in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and there is also the reference of the temple of God, again in Revelation 11 verse 1. So, will there actually be a third temple that will be rebuilt? Now, here's the thing that I want to talk about as well. Because if you think that the third temple will be rebuilt, then you cannot see the prophetic significance of Biden going to divide East Jerusalem. Now, if you can see the prophetic uh, relevance of Biden going to Jerusalem to divide Jerusalem, then you got to then explain how is the third temple going to work out, right? Now, let me show you why is it that I do not believe that the third temple will be rebuilt. Now, I've never made a stance on this before, but after thinking it through uh, and looking at what the Word of God clearly says, I believe that the third temple will not be rebuilt. Okay, here's the reason why. If you look at the Solomon's temple, the first temple, as well as the second temple, and also the Ezekiel temple, like, there are very specific measurements given for all three temples. If there is going to be a third temple that be rebuilt in between the second temple and the Ezekiel temple, then number one, why are there no measurements given? All right. Second reason why I do not believe that the third temple will be rebuilt, okay, is because if the third temple will be rebuilt, okay, either before the rapture or during the time of Jacob's trouble, what then is the point of the one thousand year millennial rule temple, the Ezekiel temple? What's the point of that? Right? And so, so that is the second reason. And, uh, and why wouldn't God provide any measurements for the third temple if, if it is really going to be rebuilt? But then, Eric, how do you explain the temple of God? Now, the reference of the temple of God in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and also in this verse, Revelation 11 verse 1, you see, the Temple Mount area will forever be the location where it is a, where the first and the second temple once stood. So it will always be referenced as the Temple of God. Just like if I go to your house, right? Just because I go to your house doesn't make it my house. Like if I go to Jack's house. So I will be saying that it is the house of Jack. Just like how it is referenced as the Temple of God. Now, I understand that, you know, they, they have all the, the temple institute, they have all the red heifer or, you know, whatever temple utensils, they've gotten all those ready for to offer up the daily sacrifices. Now, just because you want it, you know, it does not mean that it's going to happen. Because you must remember the whole purpose of the time of Jacob's trouble, it is for the Jews to wake up, to finally call upon the name of the Lord. Now, if the third temple is going to be rebuilt, listen to this, this is really important. If the third temple is going to be rebuilt, either before or after the rapture, then it serves no purpose. Because the whole purpose of time of Jacob's trouble is for them to call upon the name of the Lord. And this cannot take place if the animal sacrifices continue, right? Because, because Hebrews 10, 26 says, If we willfully sin after having received the knowledge of the truth, what is the truth? The truth of the ultimate sacrifice. So throughout the book of Hebrews, is repeated again and again, you know, the contrast has always been made between animal sacrifices and the ultimate sacrifices of Jesus having went to the cross. So if you have received the knowledge of the truth of the ultimate sacrifice, if, you, if we willfully sin by rejecting that ultimate sacrifice, then of course, there no longer remains any sacrifice for your sins. Because if you reject the ultimate sacrifice, then nothing else will do. Okay, back to the time of Jacob's trouble. If there is going to be a third temple that will be rebuilt, then what is the point of instituting the temple sacrifices when it is not going to wake them up? The whole purpose of the time of Jacob's trouble is to wake them up. That is the reason why, that is the third reason why I believe that there will not be a third temple rebuilt. As far as I know, there are only four temples in the Bible. The Solomon's temple, the first temple, the second temple that was destroyed by Prince Titus, and then the third temple, which is the spiritual temple of the Holy Spirit living in New Covenant believers. And number four, the fourth temple will be described in um, uh, Ezekiel from uh, chapters 40 to 48. So there are very detailed descriptions in terms of the measurements and dimensions for the first, second temple, the second temple, and the millennium temple. But if there is going to be a third temple that will be rebuilt before or after the rapture, 
why are there no measurements given? This is something that we got to ponder. Just because we see the word temple of God, it does not mean that there will be a third temple that will be rebuilt. Because I think we are really uh, assuming, you know, um, we cannot be too presumptuous. You know, I understand that when you read the word temple of God, it seems like there will be a third temple, right? No. Whatever building or monument that stands on the Temple Mount area in the year of 2022 will always, will forever be referenced as the Temple of God because it is where the, you know, the first and the second temple once stood. So we cannot be too presumptuous by, oh, just because we see the word Temple of God is going to be there. But by the way, we, we, isn't it a good thing as well? I mean, I'm not trying to get into an argument, but isn't it a good thing? So we have one less thing to wait for, right? Because if we've got to wait for the third temple to be rebuilt and for the three reasons that I've stated, I just don't believe that. Okay, just okay, let's just for the sake of argument. If there is going to be a third temple, there'll be rebuilt. Um Let me ask you, what dimensions and what measurements do they have to base it on? Because you must remember the temple of God which brings me to my fourth point. <laughs> okay, now I just thought of another thing. Because the temple of God is not like a it's not like a shop down by the streets where you can just build it to your whim and fancy. You know, you can just uh, build it according to whatever design you want, whatever dimensions, whatever measurements. Because the temple of God is very specific. So where is the temple of God? Where is the measurement for the temple of God? Because it's the temple of God, so God will give you the measurements. If God did not give you the measurements, then how can a temple be built? What are you going to base it on? I mean, the materials, the, you know, everything. It is different for the first temple, it is different for the second temple, and it's different for the uh, Ezekiel temple, which will be during the millennial rule. And all of them are different. Okay, so um, back to Biden's visit. So Biden's visit is really all about trying to divide Jerusalem. And as I pointed out earlier, the divide while the dividing of the land of God will, the judgment for the dividing the land of God will come near to the second coming. But the judgment for dividing Jerusalem will come immediately. Because once Jerusalem falls, and this is when, you know, uh the holy city and obvious reference to Jerusalem, shall the enemies of Israel tread underfoot for forty two months. This is in verse two. What immediately happens after verse two is found in verse three. And then I will give power to my two witnesses and I shall prophesy 1,260 days. And we all know that the two witnesses begin their ministry, the 1,260-day ministry, after the rapture. Alright? So it does not matter if you believe in a seven-year tribulation or if you believe in just a 1,335 days uh, tribulation like I do. We, we, at least we can all agree that the two witnesses will start their 1,260 days ministry at the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble which is preceded by the fall of Jerusalem. That's when the enemies of Israel is going to stroll into Jerusalem, and that is when the holy city, an obvious reference to Jerusalem, shall they tread underfoot for 42 months. You see the seamless continuity from verse 2 to verse 3. So where we are at right now is that we are just before the beginning of verse 2. And if Biden is really going to be there, to do what many speculate him to do, that is to divide East Jerusalem, to give recognition of East Jerusalem as, you know, uh, to, to the Palestinians as being the rightful owners of East Jerusalem. And then, verse 2 will start. I believe we were lingering around the corner just before verse 2. Alright? This is a very specific prophecy that cannot be explained any other way. Alright? If Biden is really going to divide Jerusalem, by the way, has, Jer has Jerusalem ever been divided before? No. Ever since Jerusalem was won over, um, by the, by, rightfully won over during the Six-Day War in 1967, that was when Jerusalem came back to the Jews, right? Now, if Jerusalem did not come back to Israel, then there is no dividing of Jerusalem. So then there wouldn't be that trigger, that direct trigger for the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble, which happens after the rapture. After we are gone. Which, by the way, is the reason why it's called a time of Jacob's trouble and not a time of church trouble. So, alright, so how do you know that you qualify for the rapture? Now, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 tells us, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Alright. 
Three verses before that in verse 14, it tells us that for if we believe that Christ died and rose again, okay, then he shall take with him first those who are dead in Christ, then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up. So that is the only criteria. Now, so you are going to be raptured whether you like it or not, right? Whether you are watching for it or not. As long as you are saved believer, as long as you believe in the finished work of Christ, as the full payment for your past, present, and your future sins, then you qualify for the rapture according to 1 Thessalonians 4.14. Don't just take my word for it. Read 1 Thessalonians 4.14 because 1 Thessalonians 4.14 is the clearest scripture that shows us the one and only criteria for going up in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. And that moment, if Biden is really going to do what many speculate him to do, then that moment is really just so close Away, okay. Again, let me just end by saying that Revelation 11, there is a seamless continuity from verse 2 to verse 3. We are lingering around the corner just before verse 2. Okay? And if the land of Jerusalem is going to, if Jerusalem is going to be divided, so unlike the land of God, which uh, the judgment for dividing the land of God will come near to the second coming, but the judgment for dividing Jerusalem is immediate. And I believe that that's what Biden is going there in three days' time to do. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus.